Welcome back, guys. This is Nick Trujillo here, IFBB Pro. You are watching The Bodybuilding Coach. This is a weekly show that we discuss training, supplement, and nutrition tips. On this week's episode, I'm gonna to speak to you guys about abdominal training. Um, are abs made in the kitchen? Should you train abs? Um, if, I don't, if I do train my abs, will I have a blocky waist? These are all major questions that people always ask me and tend to be like trending topics in bodybuilding about, you know, keeping your waist under control. You don't want a bigger waist on stage and you're going to lose points. You know, they score you down if you have a big waist. Um, how do I keep my waist tight? Should I use an, uh, a waist trainer? Like, are they a waste of money? So we can really go deep into this subject, um, which I which I plan to. Um, was, you know, I'm, these videos are short, so I can't really get into detail, the great detail about what I really think about this, but I will explain my feelings on this and I will get my thoughts across to you guys that ab training has to be done 100% regardless if you're worried about um, your abdominals getting more blocky or your waist growing. Um, that will only happen if genetically your dispositions, dispositions that have that happen. Um, if you start doing crazy amounts of weights for like maybe your obliques and serratus, then your weights, your waist might lose its taper and its tightness. Um, remember training abs right off the bat have to be done cross exercises. So they have to be done across all your oblique muscles and serratus muscles run on a cross fiber. Okay. Them fibers aren't running up and down. Okay. So remember, you don't want to train your abs like this. You want to train your abs like this twists, high repetitions for longer periods of time. Breathing is huge. Breathing is huge, huge, huge. Make sure your breathing techniques are down, inhaling and exhaling at the proper times to keep to keep your core tight. Um, another thing is just remembering keeping your core tight throughout the day. You know, when we eat a lot of food, we have a tendency to let our stomach go and, and distend. Um, when we train, we have, a we have a tendency to let our stomach go and distend. Um, I don't suggest wearing a belt. I suggest using your mind for controlling it. Belt's restricting the abdominal wall. You can get a hernia from that. It's not good to have something tight in your waist like that all the time. Um, I just don't believe in it. Just my feelings. Not that it's wrong. I just don't believe in it. Now back to ab training. I have always trained my abs for a number of reasons. If I'm going to be training everything else, why would I not train the most important part of my body, my core? My core has to stay strong in order for everything else to develop and grow um, at the rate I need it to be. So I can't be doing heavy squats with weak abdominals. I can't be doing you know heavy leg presses and, and lunges and deadlifts with weak abdominals and lower back. These are all intertwined. If you're, if you're keeping a core that's weak, your lower back's going to be weak. If you don't train your lower back, then your core, your, your stomach's going to be weak. They work with each other, okay? So just like anything else, you don't want a muscle imbalance in your body where your quads are dominant and your hamstrings are weak or your chest is dominant and your back is weak. It's the same thing to treat your, your core section. Your core has to be strong in order to, um, to, to support the weight in the squatting, support the weight in the deadlift, support the weight in anything you're doing. Um, a strong core will also keep your chest up, sternum, sternum, um, your chest up and your sternum high. So obviously your waist will stay tighter. Um, and obviously you want that illusion. So training your abs, you want to have, you know, nice thick abdominal muscles. You don't want a uh, thinly, you know, muscled area where you don't see them. So when you get dieted down, you're not going to really see much separation in your detail in your abdominal wall because you don't really train them that well. Just like your, anything else in your body, your, abdom, your abs are muscles. They have to be trained, okay? Um, they cannot be neglected. They can't be put off. They can't be like, oh, I'll just do those once every, every three months. No, you have to train abs just as much as you train anything else, once or twice a week. Um, if you want to go crazy, three, four times a week. But it's mostly breathing for your, your ab exercises. I, I focus on sh really strict breathing, inhaling and exhaling, which I can't really explain here on a, a 10, 15-minute video, but... Um, breathing is cute, is very huge and key to getting good, you know, response out of your abs and also doing a lot of body weight exercises, leg lifts, um, you know, Roman dead chairs, just regular sit-ups and concentrate on your breathing. Weights can come in, you know, temporarily. I don't really suggest using too much weights, uh, for to develop your abs. Um, I do incorporate them though. I don't neglect them having no weight because a little weight is good just to strengthen them and keep them tight and hard. And that gives them, that really builds them out like three dimensionally. Um, if you're a woman, then obviously you have to, to balance that. You don't want to have too much of a, um, um, a blind spot in your physique where the abs are very blocky and, and separated. Depends on what division you, you compete in. Like if you're a bikini, you don't have to worry about that type of stuff. You just need a tight waist. 
Um, and when it comes down to training your psoriasis, your obliques, it's all twisting exercises, no weight. Just concentrate on repetitions, concentrate on staying focused on your breathing. Um, and that will give you guys a very, very, very tight waist. Um, I've always trained my abs since day one, even when I was an athlete. They're, they're the center of everything. You do not want the center of your body to be weak and um, untrained. When everything else is going to become so strong and so dominant, you do not want that weak area because that's when hernias happen. Um, that's when you get, you know, uh, minor ab tears. That happens all the time to people. They don't know what they are. Um, you just don't want to deal with that. And then obviously you're going to have lower back pain. If you don't train your abs, your lower back is going to suffer because that's going to, that, now the lower back is going to have to take the majority of the load over, especially if you're a heavy person like I am, 300 pounds, majority of that load over up top and your abs are going to be weak. So you're going to slouch, you know, you're going to have that hunchback look, your shoulders are going to roll forward. Um, there's just so many things just from a, um, a standpoint of posture and, and just, you know, everyday living where, where abs need to be strong, um, to be able to sit up with your, your, your chest up, you know, instead of slouching over like this all day long, you know, just not healthy to have that. As you get older, they're going to become, become more important to you. Um, especially when, like I said, hernias, hernias are a big thing. Hernias happen to people who don't train their abs. People think that hernias happen because oh, they overtrain their abs or they, they went too heavy or um, they train abs the same day as they did legs. Like, you know, they make these re excuses up for them to not to train abs. You need to train abs. You know, either warm up your, your body with them before you go train your, your primary body, body part or, or end the workout on them. They should always get in there at least two to three times a week. Um, really, all you need is 10 to 15 minutes of ab training per session to get what you need out of it. And now, now, listen. It can't be a one set and then talk for 10 minutes. It has to be a hard 10 to 15 minutes of training to get the right, the right exercises um, you in, the sets and the reps you need in. Um, I like doing abs. I think it's a good feeling to have a tight stomach, a strong stomach. Now, once you develop the strength there, you're going to feel much different. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but you, you will feel different as far as your physique. You'll, when you walk around, you'll feel stronger. Doing certain exercises will feel different. That core will be, so be able to substantial a lot more weight. Um, it's just a different feeling when you have a strong core. You know, your sleeping will be better. Uh, you won't have you don't have any back pains. Um, and when everything's tied in and everything is trained, just it's a much better uh, physique. And um, you'll, it'll definitely show off on stage when you're training your abs compared to someone that doesn't train their abs. Um, it will not make your waist blocky. Don't ever 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 worry about that. Unless you are reckless with the exercises, like I said, if you're doing the exercises wrong and you're, you're building instead of stripping, then obviously you're going to have an issue there. Um, and then B, um, I think you have more of a chance to have a distended stomach when you don't train your abs because you have no ab control. You have no control of that muscle. Just like when you first go out there to flex your, your quads or your hamstrings, you can't feel it. It's the same thing with your abs on stage. You have to be able to tra train your abs and be able to control them and connect to them. You need a connection to them, muscle-mind connection, and it's so important on stage especially. Um, plus, just for everyday being, you want to be able to control your abs. You know, you don't want to walk around your stomach sticking on your shirt. Um, but most definitely, this is something I, I, I pay a lot of attention to, and I feel like everyone kind of neglects them because they feel like, oh, they're made in the kitchen. They hear this saying that, oh, I'll just do them when prep comes, or I'll just do them once a month, or... Oh, I can still see my abs. I'm good. It's not about being able to see them. It's about being able to how strong they are, you know? Um, strength is more important to my core than it is looks. I want to have a very, very strong core with less definition, to be honest, because a very strong core leads to so much more benefits in life than it does just looking good. Um, there's plenty of guys that have really good-looking, uh, you know, abdominals, and then they're very weak. They have, like, lower back pains. They have hernias. They have everything else because they don't train them. It's just genetically they have a nice structured stomach, so they, don't, they neglect training 100%. Whether you have a nice stomach or not, this is the number one thing. Train them no matter what, okay? Whether your stomach looks perfect just from dieting or your stomach looks perfect just genetically don't do anything, please train your abs. I guarantee it will lead to a lot longer term uh, career and health and everything else in this, in this lifestyle that we live, so... That's all I have to say today about ab training. Um, thank you again for watching. Make sure you click like and subscribe, Generation Iron. If you guys have any questions you want to answer on the show, please email us at info at generationiron.com. And you can follow me at Nick World Class on Instagram. And this is Nick Tregilli, and I'm signing out.